Good afternoon and welcome to <clears throat> Valley Views. I'm your host, Glenn Edison. We're certainly glad to have you. And you can see our program on BTC Fiber's YouTube page as well as BTC Fiber's Channel 18. And today we have with us local photographer, John Hargis from Pikeville. And John, it's good to have you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. And uh, John, I want to talk about, because uh, I've seen a lot of your work, or various parts of your work, I should say. And uh, how did you get started in photography? You've told me the story before. You weren't, you weren't always a photographer. No, I was not always a photographer. I guess it began when an Indian fellow showed up in a furniture store that I had in Savannah, Georgia. And he wanted to trade me an end table for a Canon camera. I didn't know if it was a good deal or a bad deal, but I knew I had too many end tables. So I traded him and put it on a shelf in my office. Never used the camera, and finally one of the workers at my store decided to go to the community college to learn to do photography. They asked me to use the camera. A few weeks later, they brought it back along with the notes and said they couldn't understand the notes from the class and asked me if I'd try to figure them out. And so I took the notes and did the exercises that were involved in it. And I thought, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And I guess from that day forward, I was hooked. And I've been a photographer since. And how long has that been? More than 35 years. Yeah. I have, I have been a lover of photography for, I was just bit. Yeah. Never got over it. <laughs> well, I guess that's good. Um, now, I know you uh, do a lot of uh, nature. Is that what you specialize in? I guess if you can call it that. I, or... Yeah, I would say that uh, I'm primarily a landscaper. I do some architecture. And I have a dear friend over in McMinnville who, when I met him, was a wildlife photographer. And we've kind of blended our skills over the years. We, When I first met him, he shot wildlife and I didn't. And now I shoot wildlife with him and he shoots landscapes with me. So yeah. it's, it's worked out well. Yeah, a good combination. Yeah. Uh, well, then that's good. And then, uh, Now, you, you not only just shoot around here, you go, go different places or you have, right? I have continued to do that for many years. Uh, the same gentleman that I was, was talking about and I used to each year take two two-week trips somewhere in America to photograph. And it wasn't looking for the fine restaurants and the best motels. We were photographing. Day, day to, dark to dark, I guess you would say. Yeah. Uh, been over most of the country, not all of it, but uh, a great deal of it. And then also, for many, many years, I, every February would spend in Puerto Rico photographing down there. Oh, okay. So I, I enjoyed that a lot too. and. Uh, Recently, I've been photographing a lot for the uh, for the federal designation that they recently gave us as one of America's scenic byways. They've asked me to do the photography for that, and I'm in the process of doing all that now. Well, I know uh, <clears throat> one of your uh, photos was put on the new uh, plaque that they have at the Overlook on 111. Is that right? It is. It was done from uh, from the head of the valley. They wanted more pictures of the valley itself. So that was just am among the photographs that I did. It was from a friend's house that lives at the head of the valley shooting northward. And they just thought it accurately represented what the valley looks like. And so uh, they, they used that. And I think there are two or three places where it was. And the emphasis of that was the Sequatchie Valley, an information board for people who were coming into the valley to read about the valley and get some understanding of just what we have here. Well, I know it's it's uh, it's very attractive. I know that the, with the uh, the way they set up, it's it's good. Cool. Uh, I found this valley more than 25 years ago. I was looking for land, living in Chattanooga, and answered an ad in the Chattanooga newspaper for a guy that had land in Graysville. I met him in Graysville. Didn't like his land, and he said, I have land in Pikeville. And I said, good, let's go. Where is it? So he led me across the mountain, and as you approach 
the valley, you make a hard left turn off of the top of the mountain coming down toward Pikeville. It was a time of the year without a lot of leaves on the trees. Uh, you could see into the valley and the valley just opened up in front of me and my, my heart started beating. I said, Lord, I have to live here. This is the most incredibly beautiful place I've ever seen. It took me about six months to find a place and uh, he called me one day and said, I've got two places left. If you don't like either one of these, I'm through with you. <laughs> so anyway, I said, I, you know, I hope we don't lose our friendship over this. So I came and looked at one on the mountain and it wasn't it. And then he brought me here and it was the perfect place for me to be and uh, bought the land from my wife's nephew. And he always says that he sold me the land and threw his and in, in the deal. I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. Uh, <clears throat> well, it's a beautiful place here. Uh, now, um, your work, I know um, it's been out at uh, Fall Creek Falls and uh, where more, than, more than 25 years. Yeah, and you've been to other places as well, right? You have it really all throughout the states, don't you? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I guess my home park is my special place, though. So, uh, you know, I guess the story was uh, I had been shooting Fall Creek Falls when I first came here a number of times and never got anything that was beyond a snapshot. And finally, one morning I was leaving the park. I'd been down below shooting and came up and still shooting film, started walking toward the car, and there were two photographers there and I just passed them by. I got to my car and looked down at my camera and said, I still had nine shots left. And I said, get back there, you lazy thing, and shoot those shots. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna do something crazy. So I hung the camera over the retaining fence and shot it. And at that time, it was all transparencies. Had to have them developed, got them back, and out of those nine, most of them were off, off plumb. The, the waterfall was running off to the side just a little bit. Couldn't use them, but there were about two or three that I could use. And I asked that printer if he would print one. He did. And I took it to Jim Hall, who was at that time the superintendent at the park. I, I called him first and said, Jim, I have this picture and I, I think it's okay. And he said, well, come on out. So I met him out at his office at the park and took it out from behind me and showed it to him. And he just, he, he said, let me have that. He, I thought he just wanted to hold it closer and look at it. <laughs> yeah. He just took it around and set it on his credence. And he said, that'll do. <laughs> he said, let's, let's go to the end. I'm going to introduce you to the end manager and we're going to put your work in the end. And that's how it all began out there. And it's, yeah. it's been going on for more than 25 years now and I don't know how many photographs have been sold from that place but it's been a bunch and I know you uh, you also have a website so people can get in touch with you I do I do it's called perfect light gallery and people think it might have a religious connotation but it does not it just means that the light needs to be perfect for you to get the perfect shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah so hence perfect light gallery and we did have a gallery here for several years. Uh -huh. uh, Melba had the building that was the dance studio recently and right, right across the street from Howard Up Church's place. And I decided I was gonna open an art and frame shop. And we, Melba thought that I would spend about 15 or $20,000 fixing it up and then I'd lose 15 or 20 more and I'd come home. <laughs> But we stayed there for several years and the issue became I didn't have time to photograph. I was too busy matting and framing. I mean, it was uh -huh. eight or 10 hours a day, every day. And uh, I don't think we ever lost any money, but I got really tired of it and yeah. finally sold it. And the people kept it for a while. And I think they moved up on the mountain and have a little place up there. But that was the end of my <laughs> gallery <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I imagine that can be time consuming. Uh, now, um, you have done, uh, since we mentioned the, uh, the plaque on the overlook, you, you have done a work for both uh, of the 
chambers in Bledsoe and Sequatchie County, have you not? I have not. For the for the same uh, scenic byways thing that the federal government has has given us that designation. I I did the photography for Bledsoe and also for Sequatchie and this elected not to go as far as Marion County. Just didn't, yeah. didn't want to go there, but that's pretty much done. Although. We've got some really good things coming with that, with the chamber, and I don't know whether I'm, I need to get into that right now, but there's gonna be some exciting things coming out of this. Well, good, good. Uh, what, a, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, well, what advice would you give to uh, any young, uh, uh, aspiring young photographer that wants to? Ah, uh, boy. Just keep on I, I think. I guess one of the things I would say is try to learn your camera, learn the basic functions of the camera, and maybe as you shoot, don't get discouraged. Maybe a year or two in, go back and look what you did a year or two ago and compare it to what you're doing now. And I think it'll lift you up a little bit and you'll say, I am getting better. I'm beginning to really understand what to do. Uh, those of us that do it very, very seriously call what we do the gift. You know, it's one of those things that we're either blessed with or we're not. Uh -huh. You can be the best photographer in the world technically, but if you don't have the gift, it doesn't matter. Your work will always be sort of uninteresting and Never, never much marketable. Yeah. But you got to get technically good enough to know if you do or don't have the gift. And someday you'll know. I know I used to, when I was I taught school and I was on the annual staff, and uh, I'd ask them sometimes about taking pictures of the ball game. Of course, everybody knew how to take a picture, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they just didn't know how to take it with their cameras that we had. <laughs> I, I, I guess one of, one of the ways that you evaluate that is, does anybody want your work? You know, if nobody wants your work, it either may not be very good or maybe you're just not quite ready yet. Yeah. Uh, for many years, I did two seminars a year at Fall Creek Falls. One, what they called uh, Waterfalls Weekend, and the other one was Fall Colors. And sometimes we would have 40 participants, some as good or maybe better than me, and, and a lot of people who just barely knew which end of the camera to point. Yeah. But anyway, it, it was rewarding. You know, people people always liked them, and, and I always enjoyed doing them. Well, that's uh, that's fun that you enjoy. I mean, that's part of it. You have to enjoy what you do to absolutely to uh, to get anything out of it. Um, now. Um, Maybe this, you don't want to talk about this year's, uh, maybe this comes under what you were talking about, things coming up, but uh, what about, uh, you were talking to me the other day about a book, a picture book. Is that something you want to talk about now or you want to wait? Uh, I, I think I can talk about it. Uh, the head of the Chamber of Commerce in, in Dunlap, Janice Kaiser, has proposed that we do a coffee table book of a cruise through the Sequatchie Valley picture book. Uh -huh. Probably about 200 pages. And it's going to take a little time to get to get it all put together. There's a lot of pieces to put together. The images are done. It's just a matter of uh, finding somebody who will print it, finding somebody who will do a good design of the cover and the inside, uh -huh. and somebody to do the text. And we, I think we have that. We have part of that solved, but we don't have all of it solved. But uh, it's a pretty expensive undertaking, and uh, I guess some people will be seeing Janice with her hand out a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a little money for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I mean, that that's good, because the Valley has a lot of things to, uh, uh, I know you, a lot of the things you're taking pictures of are like the old barns mm. and, and things like that, that uh, bring back a lot of memories to people. and. People like seeing those things. 
They do, they do. And uh, part of what they're gonna do with this federal grant is with the farmers of each county, they're gonna select five barns and have on them a sign that says, see Tennessee's Great Valley. And they will be up and down the valley for, for people coming down 127 or one of the other highways to see and understand what a special place we have here. Well, that'll be, that'll be nice, that'll be different. That'll be different and, and having <coughs> traveled a lot of America, this is a sweet spot. This is, this is a special, special place. And, and I find that the, some of the people who have grown up here don't, don't appreciate it quite as much as those of us who came later. This is a lovely, lovely place. It is. It's beautiful. Well, now instead of seeing Sea Rock City, now we say Sea Sea Sequatchie Valley. Right? Exactly. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Not nothing against Rock City, I understand, because they have a uh, you know you they're everywhere. <laughs> it's all throughout the southeast. Well, we may have to borrow their barns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Um, um, I know you've enjoyed this because you um, uh, we talked about this before just between us you know we 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 talked about how you enjoy doing that and um, uh, you know it's interesting how you, you start out and you, when you didn't know anything uh, about photography and then you just got into it mm -hmm. and uh, that's encouraging for others who uh, think that they have to know all this stuff before they get into it they don't have to they just have to be willing to learn. Going back to that point, it's always good, if you can, to shoot with somebody who knows more than you do. Uh -huh. Most photographers, not all, most photographers are willing to share what they know. I, I think we should. I'm, <clears throat> I try to be an open book. No matter what somebody wants to know, if I know it, I'm going to tell them what I know. And most people, I think, are like that, but there are a few that don't want anybody to know what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, they want to keep all their secrets. They're not secrets. They yeah. just happen to think they are. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> with the, the valley here, you have, even from where you live, uh, here you've got beautiful scenery around. You, I imagine you've taken quite a few shots just from your house, haven't you? Some, I have, yes. I've taken some shots from here, but... Uh, the one thing that I find that the higher you get up, the less interesting your camera wants to make it look flat. Yeah. If you were up on the brow of the mountain and shot down into the valley, it would just look flat. You don't see the detail. Uh, no way that I found to cure that. So I don't shoot much from up high. Yeah. <clears throat> I may shoot something that is high, but I don't shoot down. Yeah. Just doesn't work that well. No, no. And uh, 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 Melba was showing me a picture of this uh, wood that <coughs> we have out here that she had taken. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty. Uh, I yeah. like I like woodpeckers, but sometimes I don't, especially at six o'clock on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and these are those woodpeckers are the most reclusive. They're the largest woodpecker in North America. Uh -huh. And until I did that shot, I didn't know they ate the berries on a uh, dogwood tree. I had yeah. no idea, but that, that one was sure eating. <laughs> and uh, that is just one of those pictures that women are particularly drawn to. I can't tell you why. I mean, women don't generally like photography any better than men, but somehow that picture just touches a lot of women. They, yeah. they relate it to their mother or to something. I don't know. Maybe it's the red hair. The birds. <laughs> yeah, that could be. <laughs> That could be. I, I don't know what it is. <clears throat> now, uh, what all? Uh, uh, what are some of your experiences that you can remember that are different animals that you've uh, taken pictures of? I guess the the first one that I can remember was uh, photographing bears in uh, Cades Cove with my partner, who was a wildlife agent and became the deputy director for several years. He and I were shooting a fairly young bear over in Cades Cove and I didn't know anything and we were approaching the bear 
And he just snapped his fingers and he pointed at me to stop. So I stopped, set up my camera and started shooting. And we did all we needed to do. We got ready to leave and we're walking back to the car. And I said, Tom, could we outrun that bear? He said, I don't have to. All I got to do is outrun you. <laughs> so there was a good lesson that. Pay, pay attention yeah. to Tom, he'll keep you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I had an experience over there where I was shooting a mama bear, and if you don't know about the bears in Cage Cove, if a bear, a black bear, the only kind they have, has a white tab in his, in his ear, clipped in there like you would do a hog or something, it means that that bear has had an incident with a person. Oh, okay. And I'm busy shooting this mama bear, she's rooting around, and I see her cub, a yearling cub, I'm just busy shooting and setting up and shooting, and then she raised up to look for the cub, and she happened to look directly at me, and here was a white tag in each ear. Oh, wow. And that means she's had two incidents with people. So I climbed down off where I was shooting and yeah. put my tripod on my shoulder and lit out from there. I, mean, I, I backed in reverse <laughs> for a little ways and then just took off because the next thing that results from that is you may get hurt, but if the bear has another incident, they put the bear down. Uh -huh. So I didn't want to be a part of either one of those things, so <laughs> no, I no. left and never saw her again. But, th but that picture is, is done pretty well over in that area. A lot of people have liked that picture. Well, I know uh, when I was in Gates Cove one time uh, with my family, we, uh, there were a bunch of cars parked on the side of the road, and we didn't know what was going on at the time. And there were three baby bears out walking. And then all of a sudden, as we got closer to the cars, we saw everybody just run like crazy. And the mama bear had seen everybody approaching the baby bears. Mm -hmm. And she was coming in. Yeah, that's a bad deal. You have to, if you're gonna be over there and mess with the bears, you need to understand the warning signals they give off. <clears throat> the kind of the first warning system is a little bit of a growl and the second one is she'll be up on four legs with her ears laid back and her third one is a false charge and that's where she stiffens her front legs and comes at you woofing which is a sad not a bark actually but a woof woof she's telling you you're as close as you ever need to be <laughs> And that reminds me of a, of a story shooting bears with, with my partner again. Four cubs and a mama, yearlings, so they weren't, when they're very young, they stay real close to mama. Uh -huh. But a year one doesn't. It wanders about a bit. And they were in a dry creek bed, mama up on the side sleeping. And I was shooting mama, and I noticed out of my left eye that there's something moved beside me. I thought it might have been a cub. I looked over and it was some guy from up north. I knew it was. And he had a little point and shoot camera and he was getting closer and closer and closer. And I did like Tom did to me many years before, snap my fingers. Watch it. And he looked at me like, what do you mean watch it? Yeah. He took about two more steps. Mama Bear got up and woofed and false charged him. And the last I saw of him, he was going over a hill. I could see the bottom of his flip-flops. <laughs> so anyway, we decided we'd mess with that bear enough and we were leaving just yeah. about the time a ranger was coming out of the open. And he said, don't you think y'all have shot about enough here today? They knew us. And he said, yeah, we probably had. He said, somebody said they were just attacked by a bear here. We said, really? <laughs> we knew all about it. Yeah, yeah. So, some interesting experiences. So it's always best to have a good zoom lens where you can take from. Yeah, you want to be far enough away. And <clears throat> you need to understand how the bear acts and reacts. As for all big animals, you need to understand them a little bit. Yeah. We've photographed a lot in the uh, land between the lakes. Big elk herd there and a big buffalo herd. And they have minders that keep you on the drive around. It's about an 11 acre drive around where you'll see these animals. And we were shooting the, the big bison one day and 
he pulled up to us and said, don't get far away from your truck because all he would like to do is to separate you from your truck. And he has been known to attack people. Hmm. So I've got a nice picture of him getting up out of a dust bath with, with a real evil look in his eye. <laughs> so we didn't get far away from our truck. No, no. No, even even that, even inside the truck, they can do some damage. His hump, as we drove around that loop, we came back to where they were and they were moving from the loop outside. His hump was higher than the top of our truck. Wow. I was sitting in the passenger seat and could not see the top of his hump. Wow. That was a big, big bull. Yeah. So anyway, buyer beware. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, any other uh, experiences you've had that you want to share? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Well, if uh, people wanted to uh, get in contact with you as far as purchasing some of your uh, photos, how would they do that? Either through perfectlightgallery.com or just, I'm in the phone book, John A. Targets, Tanglewood Drive, Tanglewood Hills Road. You can't, can't help but find me. <laughs> uh, and I, and I, I do get a pretty good response on my website. And uh, my work is in enough places. I get a lot of calls from people just yeah. bumping into where they've seen my work. Uh, I have done a lot with Cumberland Mountain State Park and uh, my work has been in the governor's mansion. I can't tell you that it still is, but it has been. Three or four of our last governors have had my work. But anyway. Well, that's good. That's nice. should, a lot of places it's been a, it's been a fun career it's it's a good hobby and it's 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 a, a good career as well meet a lot of people yeah i bet you do i bet you do well is there anything else you'd like to add to what we've uh said no about? i i appreciate the time you're taking to just come and talk with me it's, it's well i appreciate uh, being with you because i know you're you're known throughout the area so it's not like you're just a uh that's probably about the banks I robbed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I won't go there. It may be. I don't know. But uh, again, thank you for being with us today, John. Yes, yeah, sure. It. Thank you. And again, you can see uh, this program on BTC Fiber's YouTube channel as well as BTC Fiber's Channel 18. So until next time, have a good day. Hey everybody, this is Glenn Edison from Valley Views. We appreciate you watching our shows and we would like for you to like, share, and follow us on Facebook as well as like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Brought to you by Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative, your full-service telecommunications provider right here in the Sequatchie Valley.